being outside is what it's about, right? Outside working, producing something, making something, fixing something, making something better, improving your property, learning something new, helping somebody out. That's why we like being outside, right? Hey folks, here with Otter Creek Farm, out here today, getting a little more work done on the road. Adam, who is a uh, business owner, friend, and uh, uh, neighbor out here, has an excavator, he's doing some work next door, he's done lots of work for me in the past. Uh, but uh, what I asked him to do today was to help me put a ditch on the side of the road. Last time it rained, this whole area was completely flooded. Uh, it was soft soil. I've been bringing in sand and uh, limestone to uh, firm it up, and uh, consequently, I got to raise the, uh, the the gate about four or five inches, make it easier to open. But he's taking care of me and creating a ditch, so when it does rain, the water will drain to the side quickly before, uh, so it doesn't just sit on the road, right? So uh, this is going to be a huge help. It only take him a couple minutes with that excavator, which is a nice size not the mini by any means it's a good mid-sized excavator so you can get a lot done with it it does pond digging uh road stumps trees you know that kind of stuff so if you're in the chiefland area and you're looking for someone to do that kind of stuff uh, you know hit me up in the comments and i'll send you adam's info and uh, he can come out and take care of your stuff too he does this and all kinds of other stuff uh you know outdoors been around chiefland area his whole life i understand so knows how to do all this stuff from controlled burning to excavation to bush hogging and land management so very uh good guy to know and uh, to be able to call on so um you know hope you enjoy the video and uh if you have a similar problem consider the ditches so what he's doing is obviously he's digging the ditch but he's moving that dirt up towards where the ditch comes in from along the road so i think what's happening is this is just naturally the lowest point in here and even the ditches along the side of the road are channeling down to my my gate. Uh, I've asked him to, to you know pile the dirt that he's taking out, block that dirt from, or block that water from just pouring into this particular area. It'll save me having to raise this whole area, you know, two feet, uh, you know, to make it right. He actually expanded the pond for me as well. That was another thing that he does. He works on ponds. Uh, you know, needed a deeper pond so it'll uh, be deeper during the dry season, which it is now. But also, um, you know, on a in a hunt camp like this, it's good to have uh, good material to use wherever. And I've had piles and piles of dirt that came out of the pond. And uh, when you look at the amount of expansion that we had in the pond, you would barely think that there's no way these six or eight huge piles came out of the pond, but they did. And I've been able to use the tractor to move that uh, you know to move that dirt all over camp and I'm filling in between pine rows I'm raising low spots uh, all that kind of really cool stuff that you know, if you just didn't have the dirt you just you just have to kind of live with it you know I've been able to come out here and and build this whole thing up this whole thing used to dip way down and then you know the first time I came out here when it was really wet you know I had to wear my boots uh, you know it came halfway up my knee boots so this is going to be a big improvement in the overall water management program. Here we are back here, looking back this way towards the towards the field. Got some rough stuff left over here that I need to get straightened out. This is where I actually broke the the uh, the bucket last time I was out here digging in this stuff. I caught a root, and I had the bucket too far forward. And what happened was because uh, the bucket was so far forward, it was pulling more on the back of this edge pulling more on the back of this edge than the front of the edge. So it actually popped out. It broke the weld. It was really kind of a crappy design. It had a little bit of an opening and there was a square piece from this bottom piece that actually stuck up through that. And this just kind of pulled over the top of that and popped out and the whole bucket fell off. And I thought, oh my God, I got a huge expense. But then I was looking at this and then I got disappointed in general because this is stitch welded. Of all things you know you can see stitch welds going along here you know if you want something to be durable you know a bucket's it so uh, what I did was I got a big sledgehammer pounded this back down best I could it's not perfect but then I cut some gussets some triangular gussets here and uh, before I put those in I welded underneath 
I welded on the inside and then I welded the gusset in place and I did that on both sides. So uh, I believe the bucket is now stronger than it was in the past. And um, so far so good, you know, I've slowly tested it and it's continued to improve. This is another thing I had when I, when I bought the tractor, I had them weld these hooks on there, invaluable. I, I wouldn't have a bucket without these ever again. Uh, you know, I was just working uh, before I started the video, I'm kind of rearranging the camp. Uh, you know, I got a metal, metal building put up and I wanted to get all the tractor implements out of the way. So uh, I just used the, the bucket with chains to lift the bush hog, the grapple, you know, uh, the harrow rake and things like that, all from the front, which is way easier because you can lift it up in the air and uh, manipulate it. You know, anybody can get them. You can order on, on an Amazon for like six bucks, eight bucks each and then uh, just grind and weld, put them on yourself if you've got a welder. Ditch is looking good. My box blade's coming. I had that on order with everything attachments for months. It was like a 10 to 12 week lead time to get the, uh, the box blade, and uh, I got a disc for the field and I've got some trails, you know, where the pine rows are in there. They haven't been kept at all. So being able to disc those many times will eventually tear all that up and uh, I'll be able to flatten that out and that'll uh, work well. Plus I got the field now, which I, you know, I want to maintain as a food plot. So I'll be able to disc it every year and uh, get, the, get the feed in there. You got that excavator from a rental company it had 700 hours on it and it was used by some kind of environmental company that uh, uh, didn't abuse it at all uh, he said what gave him the clue that it was in good shape is it didn't have a thumb on it so that he knew that they were just kind of using it for digging test holes of some sort and uh, it's been a rock star I mean you, you know after the first 20 hours you couldn't tell a new one from this one so it was uh, really a great find and I know I probably <laughs> paid for 15% of that excavator uh, paying for the, you know the work that he did for me which was enlarging the pond and then also what he did was um, opened up the camp area so I didn't want to camp like right out in the middle of the field so what I did was the spot off the field that was mostly scrub it had some nice large trees kind of in the right spots and I said hey let's let's put camp in here so when you come onto the field itself you actually can't even tell that there is a, uh, a camp at all which is nice because if somebody's on here and they don't you know they shouldn't be they're gonna come out there they look down the field and hey there's nothing there uh, but if you drive down the field then I got a little turn in and then you can see the camp and if you're out in the field looking back yeah you can see the top of the shipping container which is, uh, which is okay. I left a strip of vegetation between the camp and the field. So, you know, it would stay secluded. But also one of my long-term goals is to actually build a porch on top of the shipping container. So we can go up there at night and get above the mosquitoes. Also look out into the field, see the deer on the feeders, you know, things like that. Um, you know, one of the uh, big decisions that I'm working on now is trying to decide whether or not I want to get a sawmill instead of buying more pressure treated lumber you know it's, it's a tough decision right now because the prices are through the roof and you, but you know they're not going to be that way forever so you know trying to make a good long-term decision on what's really going to be best and I'm leaning towards the sawmill because I really think I would enjoy the process of collecting wood and processing it and then just the joy of having an unlimited amount of of wood would be awesome and our property is full of pine trees like this you know we got mature pines really good 14 to 16 inch pines we've got some hardwoods mixed in which you know I don't I wouldn't take any hardwoods but I mean look at that pine right there there's a 24 inch pine that's right in the middle of all these uh, smaller saplings that could come out I mean it's got no value in there there's some more but uh, once you get down there, you can see the big pines and this whole area over here is all mature pines. That's all ours. So I could come in there and selectively cut down pine and get 
plenty of two by fours, some eight by eights for some uh, pole barn main beams. You know, really everything could be uh, taken right from the land at no additional cost other than the cost of operating a sawmill, which isn't free. Initial investment's rather healthy. But uh, the other thing I wanted to do, you know, I was gonna get a second shipping container in here. But when I went to go buy it like a month ago, you know, the uh, the company said, well, it's $2,000 more because I wanted to get a one trip so it didn't have all the rust. I wouldn't have to do all the painting and the sanding and the, you know, rust treatments and, you know, all that kind of stuff that eventually you end up having to do on these containers. And I wanted to just avoid that. So it was going to be about $8,000 for uh, a 40 foot high cube uh, one trip with double doors. And uh, I, I just, you know, I, I mean, I get a really damn nice sawmill for that same price um, and have wood for life at that point. First thing that has to get done is got to build a, a uh, pole barn for the sawmill. So that's an unexpected project, but um, you know, kind of a welcome one. I, I saw a bunch of people online take trees like this and that's a nice tree right there. It'd actually be a good one to cut down. So that one right there, but uh, take trees like that they drop them and then they basically just take them and put them in holes in the ground and then they cut you know they cut the tops and then they set another one across it and uh, basically build a very very simple framework from raw trees now it's not, obviously it's not gonna last as long as pressure treated but there are some things that you can do to make it uh, last longer you know if you want to get rid of termites and things like that then you know uh, you can paint them with diesel, uh, and I saw this just yesterday. Somebody uh, mixed diesel and oil and painted it on because termites hate, you know, nothing. No insect can tolerate diesel, and it lasts a long time and it leaches into the wood and it may rot. It'll probably rot before the bugs get it, quite honestly. So it is uh, a good way to take something like this, which is already full of sap and make it even more resistant to the bugs and the and the moisture damage and things like that so it looks like adam's almost done this was a combined total of about 20 minutes and i'm very thankful that he was able to hook me up i'm a pretty good salesman for adam you know i i go out and find jobs for him so he can make money not only have i paid him a lot of money but you know i find him other people that want his services uh, so uh, he's gonna give me a little payback here, which I appreciate because I've got another guy that needs his services uh, to get a pond dug, which will be a rather big project. So he'll make really good money off of that one. You can see his setup. He's got the uh, eight wheel gooseneck big Tex, what is it, 20,000 pound uh, capacity trailer on an F350 crew cab flatbed. If you guys haven't uh, gotten mega ramps, on your trailer absolute joy to have those little flimsy flip down things that you got to be careful about staying on mega ramps are the, are the best things in sliced bread i'm not getting another trailer without them i got them put on my last trailer and uh they're just awesome you know you never have to worry about missing anything they're wide mega ramps are a good deal looks like he's almost done now i'll come along with the, the rear blade and just angle it just push all that kind of off to the side because what, what I don't want to do is develop a bowl where the water runs this way. I want it to run off evenly off both sides. So got a little finish work to do here or maybe I'll just back drag the bucket. So here's the finished road. Ditches are in place. Smoothed out. Looking good. Rainy season's coming, so we'll see how it works. All right, well, you guys have a great day. You know, at this point, you know what this is going to look like and why I'm doing it. So, appreciate your time. Have a good one.